Jethro figures about six days, hard driving. Where are you going with that wood? Well, Granny wants it on the truck. Put it down. With all the wood we got back at the cabin, we sure ain't going to haul none from Beverly Hills. Oh, she says it's for on the way. On the way? <laughs> Granny, what in the world do you do? I'm making sure we don't freeze to death. Get warm here. Won't be when we get in the mountains. You figure to keep that thing burning for six days? And six nights. Don't forget, it's December every other place but here. Damn, blame California. The weather's as mixed up as the people. I'll be glad when I get back where there's some snow and ice. I can't wait to see Ma and Jeff Green. Yeah, it'll be my fine Christmas present for your Ma and your sister, us dropping in on them like this. Now, tell me again, exactly what did Marie say? Tipper said the climates were loading their truck and appeared to be moving out. Why? What could have happened? Who offended them? Whoever it was, I'll have them driven out of Beverly Hills. Chief, <laughs> Chief, don't get so upset. I know a man with $25 million in your bank is a... Is that point. why you think I'm upset? Because Jed Clampett has $25 million in my bank? Isn't it? Of course not. The thing that upsets me is the fact he might take it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to the key to that door, but I reckon with our stuff out of there, ain't nothing left anybody want to take, except some old pictures. Oh, Miss Hathaway says a couple of them pictures is Rembrandt. All right, after Christmas, we'll see he gets them back. <laughs> John! John! Where, where, where are you going? Going home. What? Oh, please, you can't go away and leave me like this. All right, climb on. I reckon we got room for you. Oh, my heavens, we caught you before you left. Granny, is there room for two back there? Yeah, if you want to squat next to the stove. <laughs> no, we don't want to go with you. We want you to stay here. We'll be back after Christmas. Well, Mr. Clampett, if, if you want to go home for Christmas, let me make the arrangements. I'll have you there tonight. Tonight? Clean back home? Yes, and you'll arrive in style, too. Well, Miss Hathaway, I think Granny and Ellie May should have mink coats for the trip, don't you? Oh, Oh. Well, let's go take care of it, and the reservations, too. Mr. Clampett, you start unloading the truck and leave everything to us. You'll be home in five or six hours on the jet. What's a jet, Paul? I don't know. A uh, bus or jitney, I reckon. You get us there tonight? You heard what he said. Well, that will be a surprise to Pearl. Uncle Jed, it took us six days to get out of here. How are we going to get back home in five or six hours? That bus driver must know a doozy of a shortcut. Pat, ah, have we got plenty of champagne and caviar? I guess so. Why? The entire first class section has been reserved for a family of VIPs. Clampett. Wow. <laughs> Young ladies, I presume you've been advised of special arrangements for the Clampett family? Oh, oh yes, yes, indeed. You certainly have. Here they come now. Oh, get a load of those minks. Yeah. Granny, Ellie Mae, right this way. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable in the lounge. But... Uh-oh. How did they get past the gate? Let's get them out of here before the would see them. Uh, I'm afraid you're in the wrong section. May I see your tickets, please? Well, I don't think we got any. See, the bus sure is fancy. Bus? You've come to the wrong place. You want the bus station. Now, just go back the way you came and ask for the traveler's aid. Now, they'll help you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, ma'am. Now, uh, Granny, Ellie Mae, come on. We're on the wrong bus. Mr. Clampett, what's the trouble? This is Mr. Clampett. Hey, of course. Right this way. Yep, Here, Jethro. Keep the tickets. Now, Mr. Clampett, you have the money Mr. Drysdale gave you? Yes, ma'am. Right here. A limousine will meet you and take you to Pearl's house. And Mr. Drysdale is phoning ahead to Mr. Brewster to be sure your cabin is in order. Well, don't let him give away a surprise to Pearl. Oh, he won't. Well, happy landing. Merry Christmas. And au revoir. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you, too. And Jethro? Here's something for you if you promise to bring it back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take good care of them. And remember, the tall, young, good-looking one is mine. <laughs> May I have 
have your coat. My coat? Please. Well, it's brand spanking new. Oh, well, I'll take good care of it. Well, it's Christmas. I got my rheumatiz medicine to keep me warm. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I coat, please? Should I, Paul? Well, I reckon not. We don't mind sharing with folks, but when they get grabby and wanting everything, well, we just got to mule up and uh, say no. <laughs> if you can't afford to buy a coat of your own, here, you just peel off whatever you need. No, no, Mr. Clare, but you misunderstood. We just want to hang the coats up. We don't want you to give them to us. Oh, well, that's very neighborly of you. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Now, if you'll all be seated over here until we get underway. Come on, let's go. Now, fasten your belt. Well, I ain't wearing one, ma'am. Just my gallus. <laughs> I meant your seat belt. Mm, no, this is a fancy bus. <laughs> Looks like a bus is commencing to pull out. Now we'll see if this bus driver knows an all-fired fancy shortcut. <laughs> That's you and me watch the road so we can remember it. Okay, Jethro. <laughs> if you ask me, this bus driver of ours is lost. He just keeps a circling and a turning. <laughs> Notice no shortcut, yes. Yeah. Me, <laughs> Listen to him erasing that engine. Yeah, but the wheels must be spinning in the mud. We ain't moving. <laughs> Got her out of the mud. Yeah. We move her now. Look at this split, too. My dog is if he gets to go much faster, this thing's gonna leave the ground. <laughs> Don't look now, but it is leaving the ground. <laughs> Jethro, you better get up there and tell that bus driver to slow down. We ain't got time for that. Let's get off of this thing before it gets any higher. <laughs> now, wasn't that a smooth takeoff? You may unfasten your seatbelts any time you like. Would you folks like some champagne and caviar? Or would you prefer a nice hot meal? We have steak, chicken, fish, anything you like. Oh, no thanks. We had a mess of grits and jowls before we left home. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to relax in it. Take a little nap. There. Whoop. <laughs> Doggies. Granny, ain't that something? It's good for the rheumatiz. <laughs> now, if there's anything else that we can do to make your trip more comfortable, just press the little button. And we'll be right here. And girls ain't a bit scared. <laughs> sure is friendly, too. Often to share their food with. <laughs> Makes me feel ashamed we didn't let them keep our coat. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go up and talk to the bus driver, Uncle Jed? Oh, I reckon not, Jethro. Don't nobody else seem skittish, and we don't want folks to think this is our first bus ride. Jim. Yeah, Granny? It sure will be nice to see snow again, won't it? That's the truth. Christmas just don't seem like Christmas without it. And Pearl's house is all a special pretty in the snow. She sure is going to be surprised when we all come tromping in there tonight. Howdy, Pearl. How are Winch? When are you going to learn not to walk into a body's house without a body inviting you? Well, I rang and you didn't come. You, you didn't give me time, you old coot. Now, don't you never do that again. Get out of my parlor. I like you when you're mad, Pearl. <laughs> you're an exciting woman. <laughs> Homer, you get out of here. I don't have time for your foolishness. Jeffreen and me is going to California to spend Christmas with Cousin James. 
Well, and I reckon you don't care to hear what I got to say. That's right. About Mr. Brewster. Mr. Brewster? Yeah, that tall, good-looking city fella who works for the oil company. Drives that big car. W- w- what about him, Mr. Hingo? You know? I've been ordered from you, Parlor Pearl. I think I'd best be going. Hold on, hold on. I didn't mean it. Please, Homer, you tell me about Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you a sweet potato pie. Well? And for dessert? Red horse swimming in elderberry wine. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> well, tell me. Well, you see, uh, he stopped over at the Emporium to get some cheese and crackers. Said he was going to be over at Jed's cabin alone all day, and he didn't have no food. <sighs> Thank you, Homer. Please. Merry Christmas. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pearl. You ain't going to do me out of my tater pie, are you? Well, of course not. You get it. Well, when? When? Well, I'll let you know. I'm busy right now. Bye, <laughs> Homer. <laughs> Ding, dang, burn it. I've done it again. Let some pretty woman twist me around her finger. <laughs> I hate to go home. Mama's going to give me the ticket. Jed. Hey, Granny. I just had a terrible thought. What's that? Suppose we get to Pearl's house and she ain't there. Where would she be? Out chasing that Brewster fellow, that's where. Ah, she ain't likely to catch him in her horse and buggy. <laughs> I play my cards, right? You get to keep that there blanket permanent. Because I'm going to have something else to keep me warm. A husband. <laughs> Ain't that a beautiful word, husband? Husband. And, and what's more, I'll be riding in that big, fancy automobile. So you can retire to pasture with that good-looking race horse from Hot Springs. <laughs> Well, I thought I heard a horse. Mrs. Moldy. Won't you come in? Well, thank you. It's a mighty cool today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it's nice to see you again. I, uh, I'm sorry it's so cold in here. Didn't bother to build a fire in the fireplace, and I'm afraid that kerosene stove doesn't put out much heat. Well, I can't stay but a minute. I just came by to give you this and say Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's just something that I made myself. <laughs> oh, nice. Land to mercy. Look at this place. Why, you men just can't manage alone, can you? It takes a woman. <laughs> oh, please don't bother. I, I won't be here. You see, I'm going home to Tulsa for the holidays. I won't go to no trouble. I'll just throw together a little snack, and while you're eating, I'll tidy up a bit. <laughs> This is the most fantastic miracle I've ever seen. The way you produce this banquet right out of thin air. Ham, fried chicken, roast pork, and this delicious sweet potato pie. (laughs) That's my own special recipe. Here, I wash you down with some red horse and elderberry juice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, that is sensational juice. But, Mrs. Bodine, I can say I, I just can't eat another bite. I, why, Mrs. Bodine, what have you done to this cabin? Oh, do you see a difference? And where did you get those curtains? Well, I just run them up while he was eating. Really, you are a remarkable woman. You, you cook, you sew, you're a wonderful housekeeper. And I love it. It ain't work to me at all. It's pure enjoyment. (laughs) Mrs. Bodine, I know that this must seem awfully sudden to you, and I I know you have lots of ties and lots of activities here in the hills, but I was wondering, do you think you could possibly be happy living in a city like Tulsa? Tulsa? (laughs) 
That's where you live, ain't it? Yes, I have a very nice home there, but frankly, it needs you. And I think Mother will agree. You want me to meet your mom, Mother? Well, actually, it isn't necessary, and I know Mother will approve my choice. Now, you don't have to give me your answer immediately. You just think it over. Y- and y- we- yes, that's, that's my answer. Yes. <laughs> but we haven't even discussed money. I'll give you ever so I might. <laughs> so, Dean, as my housekeeper, I will be paying you. Housekeeper. <laughs> that is Gary for Mother. Oh, incidentally, Mother's just going to love this elderberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> you something? You sure did. You let me cook for you. <laughs> You let me sew for you. <laughs> and the ham. <laughs> you let me house clean for you. Now then, I don't know what it takes to get engaged in Tulsa, but in these here hills, you've done enough to get yourself promised, hitched, and honeymoon. <laughs> really, uh... Mrs. Bodine, I-, I didn't mean to. I'm going to Beverly Hills to spend Christmas with my cousin Jed. And when I tell him what you done, he ain't going to take kindly to it. But, Mrs. Bodine, I give you my word that you I... You give me my hand, it sucks. <laughs> Your feet can't get no colder than they are right now. <laughs> Sleeping like babies. Do you think we should wake them for the movie? I don't know. It's a lady super western, just the kind of picture they'd enjoy. Well, why don't we start it and if they wake up, fine. Good idea. We're chasing some fellas. They're shooting at us. Exciting, isn't it? Get down. You was right in the line of fire. What's going on? Whatever it is, I'm getting in on it. <laughs> but Mr. Drysdale, Pearl is on her way to California to see them. Well, can you catch her in time? Oh, I think so. She's driving a horse and buggy. I'll tell her her family's on the way. No, no, this is a surprise. Well, then what'll I say? But say anything to keep her there until the Clappets arrive. Now, get over to Pearl's. Oh, no, she, she might misconstrue. You see, uh, I have a very delicate situation here. Yes, you certainly have. And if you spoil Jed Clappett's Christmas surprise, he'll cut off your oil. <laughs> but, but Pearl might think I want to marry. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Here's the sweet potato pie and red horse, I promise. Hey, there's a piece of this pie missing. And a goat for two of these red horse. Who got it, Pearl? None of your business. Now, get along. Jess Green and me is leaving for California. Yeah, I want a whole pie just like I was promised. Now you get out of here before I throw you out of here. Men is all alike. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> oh, don't even speak to me. There ain't a man alive worth the powder it'd take to blow him to you nowhere. 
man is just a bunch of low down, no good, Mr. Brewster. Bodine, I, I hope you're not angry at me any longer. Angry at you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, here, have, have, a, have some more sweet tea to pine some red hogs. Oh, this is a rascal who's been trying to steal my woman and my pie. I'm going to give you such a show. <laughs> oh, I think I throwed my dang knee out. And I'm going to throw out the rest of you. <laughs> See, in my business, I, uh, well, what I mean to say is that I, I'm away from home a lot. And, uh, uh, well, I, I think that a husband should, uh, that is, uh, what I, what I mean to say is that in my opinion, I, could I have another slug of that elderberry juice? No, you cannot. Now then. I've been sitting here for three solid hours listening to you, and you have yet to say one word that a widow woman could get her teeth into. <laughs> Just bring, bring the suitcase. Oh, oh, please don't go. I ain't listening to one more word you got to say lest you say it on your knees. Don't come in yet, Jeffrey. <laughs> say it. Please don't go. You are the slipperiest man that ever lived. Come on, Jeffrey. You get out of my parlor and you stay out. You want me to throw him out, Ma? He can walk. Homer Winch, is that you again? No, Pearl, it's us. Merry Christmas, Jeffrey. Uncle Dad. Why, you have grown... <laughs> Mr. Brewster, what are you doing? Mr. Clampett, if you'd been just one second later, I'd have been engaged to your cousin Pearl. Pull <laughs> <laughs> back out, Please, Mr. Clampett. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all to behave? Sure I do. Well, we might as well stay here and sing. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. 